When XCOM Enemy Unknown came on the scene back in 2012, it introduced me and others to its brand of tactical turn-based strategy, which was something distinctly different from the type of turn-based strategy games I'd grown up with. In the years since, we've seen a revival of that genre, not only with further XCOM sequels, but entirely new games in the same vein, and existing IPs getting the tactical treatment. I've grown to love this type of game, when careful planning, positioning, and usage of the tools at your disposal come together in just the right way, when you land an important shot, when you beat a really difficult mission, when you just barely prevent the death of a high-ranking squad member, these are the moments that make this type of game so special and satisfying. They come with their own specific set of pitfalls as well. Sometimes they don't feel fair, sometimes things aren't communicated clearly, and that causes you to make a bad decision. And sometimes there's just a little too much downtime between the best moments of the game. That was the glaring issue for Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which put a bunch of walking around and simple puzzles between the excellent combat encounters. When I've thought about going back to replay that game, that's what keeps me from it. When I go back to XCOM, however, it's the sheer complexity and length that tends to scare me away. Although I really like the series, and have played all the modern games and their expansions, I've only completed two. XCOM 2, and the game we're talking about today, Chimera Squad. XCOM is a game I have to play through without stepping away for too long. When I returned to my XCOM 2 War of the Chosen save midway through the campaign, after months of not playing, I found I'd lost my stride, and there wasn't a good way to get it back in the middle of things. The length of these games, and the individual missions, is intimidating, and that makes it difficult to commit to playing and finishing them. XCOM Chimera Squad addresses a lot of issues, even some I didn't realize I had with previous games in the series. It's a shorter, less expensive, more focused experience than the other modern XCOM games. Since it's not a full sequel, it isn't XCOM 3, and it's not an expansion of a previous game that's adding onto an existing framework, Firaxis was able to more substantially remix XCOM's core elements. On the surface, it's the same old XCOM turn-based tactical battles with small squads, and a strategic metagame between missions. Decisions you make in the metagame affect the tactical game, and vice versa. As you'd expect from a budget game, things are scaled down. You're no longer in charge of a globe-trotting military force. Chimera Squad is a sort of anti-terrorist special forces team, sent to keep the peace in a single city. The game's story is rendered in that lightly animated concept art style that's a hallmark of lower budget video games. But aside from that, the game doesn't feel cheap. In fact, the campaign is about two-thirds the length of XCOM 2 despite being significantly less expensive, so there's a lot of value here. The events of the game take place post-XCOM 2, in a world where humans, hybrids, and aliens are learning to coexist. City 31 represents a confluence of cultures and races, and your squad reflects that diversity. This change of setting and scale is welcome after two lengthy games and expansions that portrayed global conflicts between humans and aliens. Chimera Squad's biggest, boldest change to the XCOM formula is interleaved turn order. Combat encounters are no longer divided into player and enemy turns, now each unit has their own spot in the rotation. This column here is super important. I hated this at first. It's a huge change that drastically alters the way you think about and play the game. I always enjoyed toggling between my soldiers and pondering my options. It was a puzzle trying to figure out the best way to use each squad member to maximize the effectiveness of your turn, and ideally to kill nearby enemy units before they even had a chance to respond. With interleave turns, you're only in charge of one unit at a time. Chimera Squad forces veteran players to break old habits. While this feels constricting and disorienting at first, this change opens up so many strategic considerations that weren't present before. It also cuts down on the analysis paralysis that can occur when you have too many options at once. In a single unit turn in Chimera Squad, your options are more limited, but you're also able to do more long-term thinking about how the battle will play out, and make strategic decisions accordingly. Again, this turn order column here is extremely important. What makes the interleaved system work is the ability to manipulate turn order. As you upgrade troops and equipment, you'll gain more and more options to move enemy turns back and friendly turns up. And of course, you always have the option of attempting to eliminate the next enemy unit in line, in hopes of knocking them out of the battle altogether. Chimera Squad trades custom-created squad members with generic specialization classes for specifically defined characters. 
War of the Chosen experimented with this concept by adding a couple named special characters with unique abilities to the campaign. Chimera Squad commits fully to this idea. Since I tend to dislike hero units in strategy games, I thought I was going to be neutral at best on this idea. As it turns out, the squad members are great. Not only are their abilities interesting and useful, but the fact that they're specific characters allows for much more personality and depth. There's some great banter between squad mates that give insight into their diverse histories, backgrounds, and thoughts about working with each other. It's a lot of fun getting to command alien races that were previously only featured as enemy combatants. Although they fall into general archetypes, each squad member feels distinctly different. Choosing who you take on missions and who you leave behind to do other jobs is a more weighty consideration than in past games, and there are some units I would never want to leave behind. Like why would I ever willingly go into battle without my medic? Individual combat encounters take place on smaller maps in closer quarters. There's no more stealth, no more fog of war, no more tiptoeing around the large maps of previous installments anxiously awaiting enemy contact. You get into the action right away. Missions are broken up into discrete encounters. Shorter missions only have one, while longer missions typically have three. Each encounter moves the action to a new part of the map, and often will change the immediate objective. Sometimes you'll have to complete a task to stop reinforcements from spawning, escort a VIP to safety, or prevent the enemy from accomplishing their objective. In keeping with the Special Forces nature of Chimera Squad, each encounter begins in Breach Mode, a new phase of combat. Breach Mode is the only time traditional turn order is in place. Each of your squad gets a chance to take an action before the enemy responds, firing on targets, breaking for cover, or using special Breach Mode specific abilities. Enemies have different levels of awareness which determine whether they'll return fire, take cover, or even be stunned by your squad's sudden intrusion. Situational awareness is restricted in Breach Mode. The camera is behind the back instead of the usual overhead view. You're meant to only see what's in your squad's line of sight as they enter the room. This balances out the obvious tactical advantage of always going first. You might shoot first, but you don't know the lay of the land entirely until you've already made your first moves. You're almost always outnumbered, sometimes vastly outnumbered, so having the first strike keeps the game from being too overwhelming, and it adds variety to the flow of missions. Most of the time your performance in breach mode isn't make or break, but it can definitely tip the balance of close battles. Chimera Squad gives the player more information than previous XCOM games, allowing you to make more informed tactical decisions. This helps the challenge feel more fair. Fewer things are thrown at you without warning, yet there are still plenty of variables to keep things from feeling too tame. The game tells you how many encounters and what types of breach points will be in each mission. Each of the game's three acts has you fighting a different enemy faction, so you even know generally what types of troops you'll be facing, and you can pick your squad and their gear accordingly. This provides variety across the campaign, while also allowing you to get familiar with each faction so you can become adept at fighting them as the difficulty ramps up. You choose the faction you want to investigate, which means they can be encountered in any order. Like a lot of games that allow for this kind of player choice, the overall difficulty curve suffers a little bit. Modifiers called Dark Events are tacked onto later factions you fight as a means of trying to keep pace with the player's growing skill and their squad's increasing tactical options. In my playthrough, the difficulty curve looked something like this, when I think the intention was for it to look more like this. There are a number of difficulty options for players who want more challenge, not just overall levels of difficulty, but granular rule changes that can customize the game's difficulty more precisely. Difficulty is due not only to the individual missions, but the overall metagame. Like in the past, the metagame, or strategic layer, requires you to keep mass panic below a certain threshold, or else you'll lose the entire campaign. This maintains a level of tension across missions, and influences the missions you pick, and the way you spend resources. That pressure is a good thing, but rather than gradually increasing over the length of the campaign, I found I had things well in hand by roughly the halfway point. Playing with all the standard difficulty options, my city anarchy meter never got anywhere close to full. Chimera Squad shares the XCOM trait of being a bit buggy. Most often, it's just problems with the dynamic camera, but occasionally the interface will lag behind, or the game won't immediately respond to commands. These are issues that have been present since XCOM's rebirth with Enemy Unknown, but it's disappointing that they're still here, blighting the experience just a bit. While I got through this game faster than I have any similar game, and I was engaged enough throughout to complete the entire campaign, 
I do feel that Chimera Squad started to drag a little around the two-third mark. Despite engaging new factions in each act of the game, my tactics didn't need to vary quite as much as I thought would be required. Rather than being more difficult, I think I would have just preferred a more concise campaign. There's plenty of game here, especially for the price. I would not have felt cheated in the slightest if it had just been a few hours shorter. In fact, it would have made for an overall stronger experience. Chimera Squad is a successful experiment with the XCOM formula. It's clearly made by an experienced and confident strategy developer. No doubt many XCOM faithful will find the experiment unappealing for various reasons, but I appreciate the variety it offers. This does not uninvent the previous XCOM games, nor do I think it will prove to be the way forward for the series. It's a standalone expansion riffing on the usual structure of XCOM, not taking the series in a whole new direction. For me, it represents a happy middle ground between more approachable tactics games like Mario and Rabbids and past XCOM games, which can be intimidating for their length and complexity. Chimera Squad offers a more immediate, smaller scale experience that's consistently engaging, if less strategically demanding than the rest of the series. Firaxis took a risk mixing things up so drastically, but just like the game itself, it's the biggest risks that end with the most satisfying payoffs. Thank <laughs> you.